You got the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God will give you assurance of what's true and what's false. You'll never be in the dark when you're led by God. Some of us have put God on the back burner. Some of us have put it in the closet with wrong balls. Some of us have forsaken our source. And our source is God. If there was ever a time when all of us individually need to do some soul searching is right now. From the young to the old, we all need to do some soul searching because I believe through Bible prophecy and through spiritual knowledge, we're facing something that we have never seen before on planet Earth. Well, I watch a lot of documentaries and I watch the news. And you know, God give me discernment. I can discern when people are telling the truth or when people are lying. Warming and global climatic changes. And they say that the polar caps are melting. That means Alaska, the Arctic, the South Pole, they are melting. Now this is peculiar. This is something that has never happened in world history ever. When you have Alaska, the Arctic Circle, the South Pole, the ice began to melt, then the oceans began to rise. And those that live in those lowland areas around the world are going to suffer another flood. A catastrophic the earth is warming up see the temperatures today they say it's supposed to get around across the 80 today this is November we've had weather chaotic weather for the last year or two this weather is not natural insects usually die out at certain times. But certain insects are still alive. Certain birds fly to other areas. But they haven't gone there yet. The earth, as Brother Young said in the revival, is suffering. The trees, the water, the air, everything in earth is suffering today. And Mother Nature knows how to bring back things to its original state. Mm -hmm. And this is what's getting ready to happen. Mother Nature is going to bring everything back to its original state. Mm -hmm. If there have to be some earthquakes, some tornadoes, some floods, and hurricanes, then these things will happen in order to bring the earth back in its original state. There will be many casualties. But we have all been warned. We have all had the trumpets to blow and we've heard the trumpets blowing and the trumpets are still blowing today. And some of us have given them the death here. We have a common enemy that has started something that he cannot finish. This common enemy, don't get offended, is the white man. Somebody will, oh yeah, I don't know what he is. He's talking about the white man. <laughs> Let me give you a little history. For millions of years on planet Earth, there was nothing that resembled a European or white man. 
until five or six thousand years ago when they came out of the caves of Europe uncivilized couldn't speak eating everything wrong would get an animal, hit him in the head and begin to gnaw on him right there digging roots out of the ground And when he wanted to cupulate, he would knock his woman in the head and drag her in the cave. Y'all ain't here. And then they looked over a few miles from Europe in Africa and saw some brothers standing 10 to 12 feet tall, black as 115 men midnight. Muscles glistening in the sun. That's why we kissed by the sun. That's why they used to call us Kushites. Because we were black. And we loved our blackness. And we wasn't intimidated by being black. But some of y'all lighten it up and white it up. Putting blue stuff in your eyes. <laughs> Trying to be like your slave master. Shout out to you, man. These brothers were like gods. And when these animals crawled out and came and saw these men standing 10 to 12 feet tall, they said, wow, the gods that came down among us and they worship at our feet. I'm talking about white folk now. They worship at our feet when they came out of the cave. And see, brothers, as I said last night, knew how to serenade the sisters. They knew how to rap to the sisters. Y'all yes. ain't here. They would burn that beautiful smelling incense and be rapping to the sisters and the sisters be listening. Yeah. Go ahead, brother. We rap to the sisters and we talk to the sisters. We didn't abuse the sisters. We didn't call them the B. We didn't call them the H. We love the sisters. This is why they they would give us anything we asked for. And we would give them anything they asked for. But see, the white man just knocked his woman in the head and just dragged in the cave. She woke up no other going on. Concussion and everything. Shout out, Jay Man. And you know how we are. We are those do gooders. We trying to help everybody. So we let them into our home. We let them into our institution. We let them into our colleges. All you can hear. Because we had universities and colleges that supersede all these so-called major colleges and universities today. Superseded them thousands of years. What we taught was the full spectrum of knowledge. Not only about the earth, but the universe. And we were taught about ourselves. I'm hotel. There's a brother named Almond Rock. Was a brother now. And he was a very wise brother. And this is where they got the end of prayer from. From his name. Amen. His name was Almond Rock. So every time you end a prayer and say amen, you're talking about this black brother. All right. So when somebody says amen, you say, huh? <laughs> He's talking to you. Because amen was the name of this African ancient brother that was a genius, a multi-genius. Are you listening to me? So we let them into our universities. We taught them how to speak because they didn't have a language. We taught them science. We taught them mathematics. We taught them the whole spectrum of the universe, astrology, astronomy. We taught them everything that it took our ancestors millions of years to accumulate. And then they went back to Europe, they went back to Greece, and they became the fathers of what we taught them, and brought armies and came back and slaughtered and killed them, and burned the royal library with all those scientific books in there, so the truth wouldn't get out who was the original. Right. This is why we're in our condition today, because we have young folks thinking that Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, all these yeah. hypocrites are the creators. They are the beginners. And this Columbus myth, this fool got lost. Yeah. 
Fool ain't discover nothing. How can you discover land with millions of people on it? As if they don't exist. Oh, we discovered America. Well, I'm going to discover France. <laughs> If you want to put it that way, but there were people already here, but they committed genocide on the Native American, took their land, and said, now who going to develop the land for Oh, that's going to happen and get them niggas over there. They, they do it for us. They the ones taught us. They're very humble, and we, we can pay them, you know, and we just tell them, look, we just need to borrow a few people to come over here, we're going to pay them and, 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 and develop the land. And see, some of our people fell for that and sold some of our own people into slavery. Yeah, we did. We sold some of our people into slavery, but we didn't know what type of slavery the white man had in mind. We thought, you know, we, they were going to get paid and, you know, they going to work and then send them back. But no. It was a different story. It was from King C to King C that they worked and they never got paid one of that. And this lasted 300 years. I said 300 days. I said 300 years. And we lost over 200 million of our people during the Middle Passage. When I said Middle Passage, I'm talking about the ships that coming from Africa to the Caribbeans to America, dropping off black people to work as slaves. These are your people. And see, we forgot. We don't like to associate ourselves with Africa or African peoples or slavery. But these were our people, and it was an atrocity that happened. Somebody's got to pay for it. Somebody caused it. Somebody put us in this mental state where we fight and kill each other. We'll sell dope to our babies. And, and are you listening to me? We do all this evil to each other. We hate each other. But we love a white man to death. <laughs> We'll support the white man around by Christmas time. He show you all these little gaps. Show you all these little things. You need to buy your Christmas tree. Now you need to get some lights. Now you need to get some ornaments to go on that. And don't forget the bottom for it now. You gotta get some fruit. You gotta get some trousers to go around that. And you spend all your silly money you can't afford trying to get Christmas presents for everybody that you don't like. <laughs> and so many boyfriends and girlfriends break up around by Christmas time because they don't want to go through the hassle of buying stuff. Oh, and somebody buys something, you know, least expensive than what you bought. Hey, you don't love me. How come my gift is, is bigger than yours? This is insanity. And it's got to stop. I ain't celebrated Christmas since 1988. I ain't going through the hassle of going to the shopping mall. Oh, that's mine. I, I was your first kid. That's mine. You're fighting over stuff. <laughs> Buying stuff you really can't afford. Put it on your charge card. And, and you ain't paid for it yet. Yes. It's like a revolver. You know, you, you bought it maybe about 10 years ago. It's still revolving on your charge. You ain't paying it off yet. That's insanity. White folks are just balancing their checkbook at the end of the year. Making merchandise of you. Shout out, Jay Man. But see, they put us in a mental state where we can't get out. And I see the signs everywhere of this mental state we're in. All of us suffer from some, some kind of mental instability. Because none of us really are really sane. Look at yourself. Amen. No, it was really saying because you know your mom and daddy wasn't saying. Your grandma, your grandpa wasn't saying. And see, your grandma and grandpa had your mom and your daddy. And if your grandpa and grandpa wasn't saying, then your mom and daddy, they ain't saying. If your mom and daddy wasn't saying, that means you ain't saying. And the children that you pray for ain't gonna be saved. Yeah. And the children they pray for ain't gonna be saved until somebody breaks the cycle of insanity. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Black folk and truth. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Because he first loved me. And that's the only reason why he loved me, because he first loved you. <laughs> and I doubt very seriously that you really love him. Like you say you do. Why? Because you hate yourself. How can you love somebody else and you hate yourself? 
Love begins at home. If you don't love yourself, how can you love somebody else? It don't work that way. Love brought me back, that's a song saying. Love brought me back. It's going to take love to bring us back to sin. Or, you know, some sense. Because we all been hit in the head, left for dead, <laughs> and put in a shallow grave. And when the trumpet blows, seems like you want to come out of that grave or something, just laying there. We hear the trumpet blow, but we ain't get up. But let me be a time, you're going to have to come out of that grave. Shout out to you, man. Amen. Now, I said last night, we're going to have to redefine, re-examine everything that we've been taught by this piece. That's from the cradle to the grave. Everything we've been taught, including sex, uh -huh. including social lives, uh -huh. including political, every structure, every institution that's been set up has been set up, and the base is a lie. It is untrue, it is false, it is hypocrisy, it is demonic. And we don't have to re examine everything we have been. Mm -hmm. This is a giant scale. This is a giant leap we're going to have to take, y'all. Yeah. Now, who defined God as being a European? <laughs> you know, they didn't tell you that Jesus was white. They didn't tell you that God was white. <laughs> what did they do? They just gave you a picture, didn't they? Uh -huh. And you said, that's Jesus. A thousand words. <laughs> You didn't look back in history and say, well, well, what did Jesus used to look like? <laughs> you didn't search the history books because when you were a slave, they kept the Bible from us 300 years, and then after slavery was over, they gave us the Bible and then told us to be like Jesus. Mm -hmm. We should have knew, knew then when we looked at Jesus. <laughs> well, boy, this is like this is Jesus. Mm -hmm. He looked just like my slave man to beat me last night. <laughs> Come on here, Pastor. He looked just like that man that sold my daddy. That's what he wants. On the other side of the chapel. But Jesus looked just like the slave masters that kept us a slave for three other years. Seemed like we should have known that he was an imposter. But they said, you gotta be like him. So we changed our soul, we changed our hair, we changed our skin color. Look at Michael Jackson. That's a true testimony to a person hating what they know. Because he's trying to be something that he's not. I look at some of the pictures when he had the big nose and, and the afro and everything. He should have left well enough, left alone. But he wanted to be different. That is no law chopped down. <laughs> now see, he had a skin disease. He should have just left himself alone. He had a skin disease. And it was causing his pigmentation to turn white. He had spots all over. So he started bleaching and started putting his makeup on and he started getting lighter and lighter and lighter. And as the disease progressed, there was no return. All the money he had, he couldn't have got some doctors to help him to get his disease under control. But yet, want to lighten it up, brighten it up? I'm sure somebody said, you want to just lighten your own world? <laughs> and wearing red lipstick is not really lipstick, it's tattooed in his lips. It won't come off. He's got a tattoo into his lips. That color and stuff. Because if you don't have no type of color on your lips, you that color. <laughs> you look like a ghost or something. Or an Alabama or something. So he got to put makeup on. He got to put eyeliner on. He got to put this, uh, the hand of stuff in his lips. He got to have a little color in his cheeks in order to look like a human being. And he looked European. I'm not putting Michael down. The brother is a genius. The brother is a billionaire. The brother has got clout. 
but he's been misinformed. And he's been brainwashed to a certain degree. So they define Jesus as white. And then they said, well, he shed his blood on my cap. So we can be washed from our sins. Where does the blood concept come from? Surely it wasn't before the Council of Nicaea. But after the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, when Constantine stole Christianity and religion from African people, that's when the blood concept comes. That blood covers your sin. Which is another committee. Who defines Satan as a bodiless spirit? Are they not the same ones that sit in the seat of authority and government and say daily that they want peace and they manufacture all the weapons to protect the peace? Why are they making all these weapons to so-called protect the peace? And their ways are the ways of peace or the ways of war. Which one is, is the way of peace or the way of war? Why do we have to say, well, we want peace, but we still manufacture all these weapons of mass destruction so we can have peace? That don't make sense to me. Either you are people of war or people of peace. That's right. They're people of war. They don't want you to have your own country. They govern every country around here. They, they don't want you to make no nuclear weapons. They don't want you to have the arsenal that they have. They don't want you to be self-independent. Only nation I know of was the India when Gandhi, he told the British, he said, look, y'all, y'all gonna have to get your butts out of here. Y'all been running things for too long around here. We don't want you here. You got to go. And Gandhi, he said, look at here. We can do this thing peacefully. Oh, we can go to this city, nothing to do. Look here. If you want to do it peacefully, fine. But if not, I got a hundred million brothers over here, and they they got swords, and you think they will search. And we'll, we'll cut you down the side, brother. All of them in here, nobody in here. <laughs> and the British said, well, uh, let us think about this. I think they go. <laughs> and you saw the footage, the uh, documentary, how the British, <laughs> one by one, they left the troops. They left India. And after that, he had a little Uncle Tom Indian assassinate his brother. Brother did it peacefully. And Martin Luther King, he patted out the gun there. But who did Gundy pat down? Where did he get his violence? Where did Gundy get his violence? The most honorable Hannibal. Who was Hannibal? Is Hannibal in y'all history books at school? No. Y'all know who Hannibal is? Hannibal was one of the fiercest and fear brothers on the planet in ancient times. He was a warrior and he brought down the Roman government. This was an African brother that marched all the way from Africa to Rome and they brought down Rome. And his tanks were elephants. Them brothers marched on foot along with the Rome. But they don't put that in the history book. And you know the tactics of Hannibal, the United States government still use those tactics today in their warfare all around the world and other countries use and crowd out the Hannibal. But this brother was bad. <laughs> this brother could throw down. You talking about Shaka Zulu? Shaka Zulu didn't have nothing on Hannibal. I'm sure Shaka Zulu got his knowledge yeah. from Hannibal. <laughs> Hannibal was bad. He didn't hate no mess with him practice. Well, 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 we'll bring your kingdom down and we'll be there at 545. And he didn't spare, he cut heads off. And he didn't leave no hostages. Y'all ain't here. He didn't take no hostages. He killed everything. But see, this government went under the day. God has brought judgment. And now we're coming out of judgment into destruction. If you don't believe it, start reading the science. Don't listen to all the news. You dig for your information yourself because there are people out there that got the real information. But see, the government and the media don't want you to hear this real information. 
they had a press conference of IBM, Moore, uh, Seiko, and all these uh, Fortune 500s and Fortune 1000 business. They had a, a press conference, and they said, now, y'all get ready for the Y2K. Buy up the food manufacturing. Buy up land that can reduce crimes. Liquidate your money. Get them out of stocks and bonds and mutual funds and KR10s, whatever they call KR1. Get them out of there to liquefy. And then they had another press conference for ABC, CBS, CNN, and all these other media aspects and told them to tell the people that preparing, everything's all right. Why 2 k has been fixed. Which one are you going to take? Now, when they're spending billions of dollars downsizing and merging together and buying up food suppliers and stockpiling food, even the White House is stockpiling. I got an article this morning off the internet. This came out November 18th, but I got it this morning, the 21st, off the internet. So White House urges calm for pre Y2K grocery buying. So want you to be calm. Don't wait till the last moment. You know, don't panic. Uh -huh. yeah. This is what the White House said. And Bethesda, Merlin, uh, uh, the Clinton administration Thursday urged consumers not to panic and hoard milk, bread, and toilet paper before December 31st. <laughs> Out of fear that the so-called what? What is it? Out of fear that the so-called Y2K bug will cause grocery shortages. In fact, grocery stores around the country have cleared their computer system of any Y2K glitches. That's a lie. They have cleared their computer systems of any Y2K glitches and will have plenty of food on hand to greet the new year. U.S. officials and industrial groups say the food system is not at risk from the Y2K computer bug. U.S. Agriculture Secretary Dan Gleenick said, standing near the meat aisle in a crowded giant grocery store in suburban Washington, D.C. We are urging consumers to relax and treat the new year just like they would any long holiday weekend. He said, speaking above, uh, pending elevator music in a horn reporter. The Y2K glitch refers to a desired flaw that could trip unprepared computers and systems they control on January 1. Yeah. Computers control everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, computers won't run without electricity. And what if the electrical grid goes down? Because the electrical grid is dependent on the computer, and the computer is dependent on the electrical grid. And what if they ain't got no electricity? The computer gonna go black. Every city around, every major country gonna go black. And if they have rioting and looting and killing and shooting when the lights on, location, location, location. What do you mean? Who's your next door neighbor? Give me a drink of that water. Give me something of that read. Who are you around? What's the mentality of the people you hang around? See, it, they may be looking right now, but they the only thing get tough is one for all and all for one. Everybody's for themselves. And they will kill you for can of beans. Are y'all listening? Now, if we are in this condition for lack of knowledge, what do we need? Knowledge. Now, how are we going to understand knowledge? How do we want to understand that? What does scripture say about that? About understanding. Any man like understanding, 
There's already get wisdom. But if you get anything, get an understanding. I preached on this last night, understanding a lot of people don't understand what's going on. You think you understand, but you don't have an understanding. You got wisdom, you, you got knowledge, but you don't have understanding. Wisdom and knowledge is truth. So you need an understanding. Mm -hmm. Just waiting to When she was in our heyday, <laughs> out there in the world, she was drunk. She'd been drinking. Y'all are here. She's like, I ain't telling more. She's like, I just to help somebody. I'm just telling to help somebody. Let you know about understanding because we need understanding. And she was out there drinking, drunk, high as a Georgia pine. She didn't have understanding. Let this man take her out to the country. It's got to call this man. Took her out of the country. And told her what was going back. It's the only one of us going back. And she was drunk, she didn't know what to do. She knew what was going back. But she said, Grandma always told her when you're in a situation like that, what to do. So she remembered and came back to her. She had an understanding. But she didn't, didn't before she got there, she would understand. She never went there. <laughs> If she would have had understanding. But she went there, and, and, and when he wasn't looking, she grabbed the family jewels. Y'all in here. And gave him a tug, and he fell on the back seat. And she said she drove, she didn't know how to drive, but she drove herself back to the city. Said, knock that nigga in the back seat. And he pulled out. But she didn't understand. That he had only one purpose and one purpose in mind, and wanted to take advantage of Sister Wee. But she, she took the upper hand. Y'all ain't here. She didn't become a victim that night because she could have become a victim and been thrown in the lake. Y'all ain't here. But she remembered what Grandma had taught her, and this is why I said you need an understanding. You get anything, get an understanding, and especially you young folk. I said last night, you young folk need to get an understanding, but most of these young boys are after only one thing. And once they get it, they go on to the next. They'll leave you with biscuits in the oven. Y'all in here. And won't even come to check and see if they're done. Shout out to you. Now this goes by so personal, but I'm saying most of these kids, they just want one thing. And they get you all that. <laughs> he love me. No, he don't love you. He love what he gonna get from you. Shout out to you, You need to understand. And you need to keep yourself for your husband. Oh, can I get an amen? Can I get a friend, church? Now, young folks. Thank you, young ladies. If you got a young man to come to you and tell you to look in, I love you. And I care a whole lot about you. But you know, I know you feeling what I feel. I know you feeling what I feel. But look in here. I don't want to mess up your life, and I don't want to mess up my life, because we, we both here in school, and, and we, we ain't got no responsibility whatsoever, you don't have no job, and, and look here, if you want to, then it's all right with me. You want to keep yourself until we get married, that's fine. I'll respect your wishes. I will not pursue. I will not touch you. You better hang on that. But you got something on it now. Are you listening? Why do we have to wait? Well, I love you. Who in love got to be with? Are you listening? Young girls, keep your dress down, keep your legs closed, and you won't have no problems in your life. 
there's someone who's come along and going to treat you right. Because you saw that wrong, you're going to end up wrong. Hello? Shout out to you, man. See, some folks look back and say, they might shoot away. They're suffering going through all the mistakes they made. And you don't have to make them the same, the same mistakes. You should benefit from other people's uh, mistakes. Uh, don't uh, make the same mistakes uh, uh, other right. people yeah. make. Because uh, uh, a young man, 16 years old, and you are 15 or 16 yourself, you can't take on no responsibility. You are too young. Why bring children to the earth? And you ain't ready for them. Come on, baby. Still be all right. Yeah. 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 Do what you want to do. Yeah, 
change the game. Yeah, I'm meditating. The more I meditate, the more. Truth is light, is. Let me let me hear what's going on. I'm going into my, my message for tonight. Shout out to you, man. Amen. Y'all come on back tonight. I'm going to finish this up. All right. I'm going to finish this up tonight. I'm going to give you a little surprise tonight. Ain't got to How many George words today? Amen. Let's give them all another repeat. Amen. 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 Amen.